open conference. Okay, I just had to close that message about the recording. So welcome everybody. I am really honored to open this open conference and to see so many people from different parts of the world here together in this online space. As many of you know, normally CCIVS organizes every two years a general assembly and also includes an open conference to somehow connect with wider society and civil society in the country where this general assembly is hosted. So let me just recall what were our last uh, uh, general assemblies uh, about and where they took place. So in 2016, we had the opportunity to go to Morocco and meet with many international voluntary service organizations together to discuss about international voluntary service and to have an open conference focusing on the topic of violent extremism and how international voluntary service could contribute to combating that violent extremism. We had interesting speakers from the Coventry University, UNESCO local focal points that were working with youth, and also some local volunteer organizations who were sharing their experiences with us. It was focusing also a lot on the Mediterranean area as a region where a lot of um, discussion at that moment took place around this violent extremism. In 2018, we were invited by the member organization FSL in India to hold the General Assembly in India. And uh, this was also for us a kind of unforgettable moment because it was the last time we met physically and it was also the 70th anniversary of CCIVS. So it was a kind of big happening where we celebrated, where we together reflected on the challenges for our movement, uh, looking back at the 70 years of history, but also looking forward at what, what was to come. And we heard very inspiring stories of Indian civil society initiatives and partnerships that were created on local level to support changes in society. So we left with a lot of ideas and also uh, the will no, to work on a new strategic plan for CCIVS that will, would outline no, our way forward in the coming years. But unfortunately, here, are, here we are now in this online space. No? We had hoped to meet in Berlin, to come together and to discuss all together face to face, but it wasn't possible due to the pandemic. Uh, our international voluntary service projects were disrupted seriously by the pandemic. It was two years of almost no physical exchanges, no physical meetings to discuss for the future. But this doesn't mean that nothing happened. We had numerous examples of the resilience of our international voluntary service organizations and their ability to adapt to the different circumstances. Organizations experimented with online volunteering, online trainings, and complex online meetings, while at the same time responding to changing local needs due to the COVID pandemic. And as we started our strategic planning process, we realized that under the given circumstances, it is very hard to look forward. Everything is so unpredictable and you have to be able to respond quickly to the changing environment. But there are two strategic goals that we took up in our new strategic plan that I would like to mention, because they are crucial for the survival of the international voluntary service organizations and the CCIVS network as a whole. So the second strategic goal was to make the voice of IVS organizations heard and to show the impact of the work we do. And the third strategic goal focuses on building a community of international voluntary service actors including all those who are necessary to set up international voluntary service projects and support the work we do, so we can create the change we want to see in society. And this is where this focus for this open conference comes from, building partnerships for stronger international voluntary service projects. Having this conference online gave us also the opportunity to invite speakers from different corners of the world, 
and bring the international dimension of networking also into our discussion today. To implement the volunteer projects that we normally organize, partnerships are crucial. The collaboration between sending and hosting organization and of course the local communities are the pillar for our volunteer model. And during the pandemic, many organizations have discovered new partnerships when reinventing the work they were doing. And it is when we start these new partnerships that we have to ask ourselves, why do we want these partnerships? What can it bring to our work and how does it contribute to our vision and mission? Do we have shared values and do we respect each other's values? How can we really create equal partnerships in which we all invest, but we also receive? How can we build and create an open and constructive cooperation? Very often we look for opportunities, but we do not ask these essential questions. As value-based organizations, we need to be critical and assess our partnerships according to our values and mission. We need to set out the lines of our cooperation and agree on the common interests and efforts to be put into that relationship. I hope that through the conversations today with our speakers, we can explore how CCIB and its members can develop their partnerships so that we can have more impact on the society, have a broader outreach and inspire more people to engage in international voluntary service. And of course, also find support for the work we do. So welcome to you all. And thank you very much to all the speakers who on a very short notice were available to share their practices with us. But before we give the floor to them, we will share a six minute video with you explaining a bit the history of international voluntary service. As for some of you, this might be not something so known. And it also can introduce you a bit to our model of volunteering. So thank you for being here with us and enjoy the small introduction video about our history. Thank you. Thank you, Ingrid. And I'm sharing the screen for the video. After the First World War, a group of pacifists met in the Netherlands to discuss how to prevent war in the future. One of the pacifists present there, the Swiss engineer Pierre Sarasor, proposed to bring together a group of volunteers coming from different countries, including the countries that had been in war, to reconstruct an almost completely destroyed village in the north of France. After someone said, all this talking is leading nowhere, Pierre came up with the phrase, we need deeds, not words a slogan that for many years was the leitmotiv of the work camp organizations. And so, Pierre initiated the first project in the small village near Verdon, which had been heavily bombed during the war. Fields needed to be cleared, shelters needed to be built for the population. So, on November the 20th, yes, almost 101 years ago, the group of volunteers from different countries arrived in Essence and started clearing the fields and building shelters for the people who had lost their homes. After some weeks, the German volunteers arrived because it had been difficult for them to get a visa. The group was complete now. It felt uncomfortable working side by side for the volunteers whose countries had been in war before, but all were there with goodwill and the motivation to create mutual understanding and friendship to support the local community in rebuilding their village. Unfortunately, the local community did not want the German volunteers to stay in the village. The wounds were too deep and they wanted the Germans to leave. After long discussions, the international group of volunteers decided to abandon the village because working on reconciliation was one of the main aims of the project and this was only possible with all volunteers actively being part of the project. So, sending home the Germans wasn't an option. 
After the first experiment, the idea was born and Bier did not give up. He initiated more projects in these first years, mainly as a response to natural disasters. He also got in touch with other pacifists to enlarge his knowledge on peace building and non-violent strategies to resolve conflict. One of the people that whom he exchanged letters and opinions was Gandhi. In 1931, the two men met in Los Angeles, where Gandhi was invited after having participated in the Round Table Conference in London. Promoting a culture of peace through intercultural dialogue and mutual respect, through building strong bonds and real friendship, through sharing realities and showing solidarity, and by working together side by side. This has been the goal of more than 100 years. Organizations have set up networks through which they exchange volunteers what and work on common Go. projects. These networks can be regional networks such as Alliance for European Voluntary Service Organizations or NVDA, the Network for Voluntary Development in Asia or NAVO, the Platform for African Voluntary Service Organizations some networks share a common history or ideological background, such as Service Civil International, the organization founded by Pierre Sereso, the ICYE Federation, or IBO. While each network has its own specificities, they all feel part of the same international voluntary service movement and share the same values and goals. Many of our volunteers are placed in very, very needy communities. The impact they have is they're contributing towards the social development of that community. Also, a lot of the services that our volunteers provide are services that should generally be provided by our government. But unfortunately, with the situation that we have, these services are lacking. So the volunteers also fill the gap that our government agencies have um, failed to meet. We uh, also send volunteers for social programs where children in uh, age of risk are, um, are protected by these projects in several countries as well. We promote now more than 14 programs around the country thanks of the international volunteers. This was possible since 2005, when the leaders or the director of the CCIBS in that time invited us to be part of the CCIBS platform. Thanks to them, we still work in this activity, but also we could extend our horizon to in the social and education uh, programs. Since our establishment in 2015, we regularly receive and send our volunteers from and to other countries. In international program, uh, annually, we send around 10 to 12 people to join international work camp and training abroad. This give them opportunity to learn uh, from other people with different background and culture, and when they getting back to our countries, they can apply the knowledge that they got. Many of them say that it was life-changing experience for their personal life. This experience was amazing when I was there, but also when I came back, because uh, yeah, being able to I don't know to maybe uh, some conversations which uh, you would have never thought about bringing up uh, like some Palestinian topics or whatever, like you could do that, and even though it's just informal groups or like with uh, informal conversation, it's like really meaningful because it kind of brings. Uh, the focus on uh, some issues that are happening in Palestine. So it's also like a way to keep talking about this uh, situation. Thank you very much, Ingrid, sharing all these thoughts and especially also the video. And I would like to pass the word to Rakesh Soans. Thank you, Victoria. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thanks for the people who have made this wonderful video. So we all know the story, right? And I myself have uh, shared it with many people when uh, 
we talk about IVS, that for me, it's a great uh, group of young people who said enough to the hate and destruction way back in the First World War. And they crossed the borders, literally. And for me, it's also metaphorically to give birth to a different way of thinking for those days. So it was bold, it was different, and it was modern for those times. I say even now, after more than 100 years, the ones who actually engage with IBS family and through our project, Is it only me or we are losing Rakesh? Okay, Rakesh, we lost you. We don't see your picture and we don't hear you anymore. Do you hear us? Can you change the device? I can hear you. Okay, now we also hear you. We don't see you, but we hear you now. Are you there, Rakesh? Okay. okay. As far as I know, they are in one place. So let's give us a okay. minute to realize. Okay. Am I back? Am I back? We are hearing you. Rakesh. We don't see you, but we are hearing you. Okay. 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 It works. Yeah, we see you on your picture what... and hear you from the oh, other one. Yeah. Oh, it's gone again. Drop my Wi-Fi. Cut, cut short this. We are hearing now the CCIVS EC username. What about now? Now we see you, and uh, I actually heard you also very well now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it works. Can... It works. Thank you, Rakesh. Yeah, take this. Oh, I don't know what you heard so far, but I was just saying that you know what happened 100 years ago to this young uh, people who crossed the border and they said enough for what they were seeing. They wanted change. And they not only crossed the border, but they also metaphorically uh, changed the way of thinking. It was a new way of thinking, right? So it was bold. It was different and it was modern for those, way, uh, those days. So I say even now after 100 uh, years on, uh, the IVS is still carrying the same values and the way of doing things. And that is amazing for me. So for anybody to know exactly what is IVS, uh, one needs to actually uh, experience it. And for me, it was more than 24 years ago when I went as a ICYE participant to Denmark. And for me, it was where I found myself. I knew more about myself and my values and my culture. I started seeing everything around me in a much more different way. And the space that IVS provides even now for individuals are the same. It evokes curiosity in people. It allows people to learn. So even now, with the technology, with the connections, with the online, offline, the ease of travel, the social media has created different channels. And even the travel industry has cashed in on the IVS models to promote and capture youth market. But the essence of IVS, uh, which provides uh, by the organizations and the people who support IVS is still alive. The passion that individuals who believe IVS carry is still continuing. 
and contributing to the values and principles. So the question if IVS is still relevant is out of question, I would say. The collective consciousness that is evoked and exhibits in, is very much relevant in these times, be it the environmental or peace or any issues that we take, which is prevalent among the societies, continue to pose new challenges to the present and future generations. These are facts and one cannot ignore that. I would, I would uh, like to say that the, the opportunity for IVS in the present and in the coming days is more relevant than ever. So in this regard, uh, talking about CCAVS in 1948, when uh, both the world wars were over and IVS was very, very active, the UNESCO recognized this work and also identified that this IVS is very important for the future generations. And for this regard, a committee was formed and CCIVS for the last uh, 70 years and more has been working and being part of this journey of IVS. So we had a lot of discussions and uh, I would say we are very resilient people. You can't shake us off so easily. And even after a COVID, uh, this pandemic, we are still here scratching our heads and trying to see how to move forward and take this movement forward. So with this, uh, I would like to uh, pass on to Victoria. Thank you very much, Ratish. Just one thing uh, regarding to the to your office, because you are uh, talking from the same place. Uh, there was a request in the chat that if you can make it uh, louder when you speak, so either closer to a microphone or or closer to your device in general, for for all of you. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, and uh, thank you for for this beautiful welcoming from from both of you. And now we are moving on. Just a reminder for you to see what is coming. Yes, just so we are moving. I'm going to invite in a moment David Tyers, the coordinator of Volunteer Group Alliance. And just to put it in a bit of a frame, is the CCIBS is member of this official stakeholder group, which represents. Uh, the volunteer organizations in the high level political forum organized by the UN to assess the SDG achievement. And this is also how we found it important to, and, and we feel honored that uh, David accepted our invitation for, for the conference. So I would like to pass the word to David. Thank you so much, Victoria. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. And I will go ahead and share my screen and, um, and hope you are seeing um, my PowerPoint presentation. Not yet. No? Okay, uh, one yeah. second. Let me try yeah. that again. There we go. Yes, there, it's perfect, yes. And again, it is an honor to be with you today. And I love the pairing of stronger and together as your theme, because they embody that when you put them side by side. You know, these two words are stronger together. And it shows how we individually are stronger when we come together. So I thank you for choosing that theme for the opening conference today. And again, I have the pleasure um, for the past three years to be representing the voice of the volunteer stakeholder group at the United Nations. My association with global volunteering movement goes back two decades to 2001 and the International Year of the Volunteer. Was almost exactly 20 years ago today, I experienced my first global volunteering conference in Geneva for the close of IYV when I was a senior director at the Points of Light Foundation and Volunteer Center National Network, the National Volunteer Center in the United States. 
And that event really changed my life and opening up new networks, new friendships, new passions, and new partnerships for the power of volunteering worldwide. And um, just to give you a sense of um, the um, work of the Volunteer Groups Alliance, um, we have been um, working at the UN for the past seven years or so. And what I love about the work of the UN is it's truly an amazing 75 year strategic partnership about how we are coming together of 193 member states that make up the United Nations. And the United Nations came together after World War II, 75 years ago, to help prevent any future world wars. And so I love how the parallelism of CCIVS's work with the work of the United Nations. And again, what's really impressed me during the three years that we've been um, working with the UN system is how the member states around the world um, recognize and provide a designated seat at the UN table for volunteers and volunteer groups, along with 20 other major groups and other stakeholders. And these um, um, other groups represent business and industry, children and youth, education, academia, NGOs, persons with disabilities, and women, et cetera. And so it's really incredible to see the global nature of everyone coming together. And the Volunteer Groups Alliance is part of that family of individuals that are working to ensure the um, growth of volunteering around the world. And so when I think about the global coalition of organizations from 150 countries, and we have about 75 plus members now that are contributing to sustainable development through volunteering in all its forms. And we're so pleased to have CCIVS as a member. And because VGA really supports its members to promote the contributions that volunteers make to sustainable development, and to gain recognition for the important role volunteers play at the local, regional, and national levels in UN processes. Because the global nature of VGA, as is CCIVS, really reflects the universality of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, launched by the UN in 2015, by bringing together in partnership members from civil society and the public and private sectors for diverse locations. So to help me get a sense of your own familiarities with the SDGs, I have a quick poll. So if I can ask for the poll to come up. So I just wanna get a sense of, you know, you absolutely have heard of the SDGs. No, you haven't encountered them yet, or maybe they sound kind of familiar. So if you could please do a quick um, poll response, because although in 2021, we're celebrating the sixth anniversary of the SDGs, unfortunately, I know that in many countries, the percentage of people who have heard of SDGs is quite low. And while many businesses may be aware of them, many don't know how to participate in their implementation. So thank you for voting in the poll and maybe let's close the poll and see what the results are. Wonderful, it's not surprising. We have 93% of the people on this call um, having known of the SDGs, but I still feel like we have our work cut out for us for many other people around the world. And so, I just wanna quickly talk about the SDGs for a minute to think about when the United Nations launched these in 2015, 17 objectives aimed at eradicating poverty, protecting the planet, ensuring that all people can enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030, literally the world's to-do list. And it's called upon the world's countries to come together to quote, achieve a better and more sustainable world through their realization. And we know this can only be done in partnership. And when 
we think of the global goals, there's really five characteristics that apply to our work as well. That the goals are universal, they apply to all countries globally. That they're indivisible, the work together and are interlinked and you can't pick and choose. They're transformational. This is not about incremental change, but about transformational change. And they require all sectors, again, not just governments, but the partnership with private NGOs, academia, philanthropy. And of course, they need volunteers to achieve the goals as well. And the 17th goal is partnership. And that's very strategic to say that the 16 that come before could not be possible without these partnerships. And as the theme for this gathering, we need to all be in this together, global solidarity, as again was evident, such as in COP26 the last two weeks. And we also need to make sure everyone is involved and focused in particular on the needs of the poorest and most vulnerable. So now in the spirit of partnership, I'd love for you to type in the chat your favorite thing to do as a volunteer. It may be to cook, to sew, to paint, plant, to clean, entertain, whatever it is, go ahead and put in the chat maybe one word or phrase that's your favorite thing to do as a volunteer. And so as you put those into the chat, I want us to think about, again, all these activities you are engaged in and all the different ways you are helping give back to your local communities. And I love teaching and being able to give workshops, providing services, talking, environmental. These are all wonderful activities. And as these words are coming up, how do they make you feel? Do they make you feel maybe a little bit tired or maybe energized? Because there are an infinite number of ways that you and others, young and old and in between volunteer. And to use a superhero metaphor, when I'm sitting at my desk at work or for the past 18 months here in my desk at my bedroom, I feel like the mild-mannered newspaper reporter Clark Kent. But when I'm volunteering, I feel more like Superman. I was, mind you, I love my job, but it can be so much more energizing to be doing volunteer activities and volunteers are everywhere and their work is truly amazing. So a phrase I hate to hear is, I'm just a volunteer. You know, how many of you have heard or even said that phrase? What the years have taught us, if we hadn't learned it before, is that there is no such thing as just a volunteer. Remember all those incredible activities we just mentioned and all the important needs you were meeting. And since the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was adopted by the UN six years ago, the world definitely needs more than just a volunteer. Because volunteers are needed more than ever because volunteers, you and the people you serve are all everyday superheroes that truly can and will change the world. Many of you may be familiar with this quote from the sociologist Margaret Mead, that never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Because we know that the success of the 17 SDGs, literally saving our planet and lives, is linked to successful partnerships for volunteering. And there has been significant progress since 2015. Now, there hasn't been as much progress on the goals as we would have liked and need, and we are already behind on many of the target indicators even prior to the pandemic and the past 18 months have just made things worse and moving towards accomplishing goals by 2030. But we have made great progress in volunteering for the development and to need to make even more. So this past July, a report of the Secretary General of the UN outlined three objectives of the plan of action on volunteering for the 2030 agenda. And it shows our importance that the Secretary General of the UN has chosen volunteers in particular, among those other 20 major groups and other stakeholders I mentioned, commission a specific report. And here are the three objectives that the Secretary General outlined around increasing volunteer ownership of the development agenda through volunteering, integrating volunteering into national global development strategies, 
and measuring volunteering and its contributions to the SDGs. And I'll put in the chat this link to this report because it's really been a critical opponent of providing guidance on volunteering. And two areas that were highlighted in the report that show that we need to um, still do further work is one to really integrate volunteering into national development strategies, plans, and policies in order to expand and mobilize constituencies and engage people in national planning and implementation of the 2030 agenda. Because we really need to think about how are we um, advocating for increased government support for volunteer efforts for the broader SDGs. Because each July in New York City, the United Nations High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development, better known as the HLPF, has served as the main global platform in the follow up and review of the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs. And the major component of the HLPF each year is the presentation by member states of their Voluntary National Reviews, or VNRs, as these reports facilitate sharing of experiences, including the successes, challenges, and lessons learned with a view to accelerating the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. And the VNRs also seek to strengthen policies and institutions of governments and to mobilize multi-stakeholder support and partnerships for the implementation of the SDGs. And of the 41 VNRs prepared for the, this year's HOPF in 2021, 26 of so 63% mentioned the positive contributions of volunteering to the SDGs, are really highlighting the evidence, data, and examples of volunteer activities for sustainable development. And many countries particularly showcase the role of volunteers in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. And half of the 26 VNRs that document volunteer contributions link the volunteering to the inclusion of the vulnerable and marginalized groups. And there will be 45 VNRs in 2022. And so we want to make sure that volunteering is called out in all of them because we've really seen that volunteering has moved from no longer just being a nicety, but it and volunteers are a real great necessity. And we've seen this reality as a tremendous advancement over the past decades and how this renewed emphasis on volunteering really started 20 years ago with the first International Year of the Volunteer and continues as a legacy today. The second area of improvement mentioned is the issue of data collection. And it's so important to make sure that we are sharing data, evidence, and knowledge on the impact of people's engagement through volunteering. And this measurement is really key to ensure that we have evidence gathering that links volunteering policies and investments to development strategies. Because you are a critical piece of the pie, and we know intellectually and emotionally the power of volunteering, but let's make sure we document your incredible contributions so that you get the credit you deserve and are not left out of the story. Because we need to ensure that volunteers through their strategic partnerships are at the heart of efforts to respond, to rebuild and recover from the pandemic, and that volunteering provides us furthest behind with opportunities for greater ownership in this decade of action for the SDGs. Well, even as volunteers continue to respond to the most urgent needs, we must consider how volunteering can support efforts to build back better. If I can leave you with one action, it's to share your stories. What I um, would like to do is have you go to our website after today's conference, volunteergroupsalliance.org. We created it this summer to collect stories of how volunteers are delivering on the SDGs. And so we'd love for you to add your stories, to let the world know of the incredible work that you're doing, and for you to go to the website and see the countries around the world, what's happening and how they're again delivering on the SDGs. I want to close with the key messages from the annual International Volunteer Day of 2021, happening just over two weeks on the 5th of December. This year's theme is volunteer now for our common future. But we know that when people are encouraged to get involved in solving problems, coming together in partnership, the solutions are more likely to be feasible and lasting. 
as was proven by CCIVS after World War I. That by volunteering, people take action to improve not only the lives of those around them, but their lives as well. As we know that volunteering provides great benefits, not only to those served, but to the volunteers themselves. That's important now more than ever to integrate volunteers in the spirit of volunteering into national and global implementation strategies to achieve the SDGs and build an inclusive world. And finally, that volunteers not only are helping in times of immediate need, but raise awareness and champion change needed for tomorrow. So for generations to come, people must take responsibility for the changes needed now and recognizing and encouraging and supporting volunteering are all essential for a more just future for all. And I wanna thank you all for the responsibility you have taken. And we know that we can count on you to demonstrate how, as the UN said, volunteering is a powerful and cross-cutting means of implementing the 2030 agenda. Thank you again for allowing me to be with you today. And I thank you all for all you do in your countries and local communities. And thank you very much, David. Thank you a lot. Feel free to any given moment use the emoji for clapping or even in the silence clapping uh, sign just because I see come on, some of them to come up. So I just would like to remind everyone that it, they are tools to use. Thank you, David, for the inspirational words. And I just would like to articulate something which came in the chat is that it and it's for everybody I just who is coming today as a guest speaker that if there is a possibility to share your wonderful presentation via email, then we are gonna make it happen through emails. Thank you again, David. And I also would like to acknowledge all the contributions in the chat, like when, uh, yeah, when, when there was a question coming from David, there were already a lot of answers, replies popping up, the interaction really started there. So I would like to say thank you for that. And just, uh, yeah, keep it up, keep up the spirit for the, for the next coming hours as well. Thank you a lot again. And now we move on. Uh, there will be a roundtable, uh, we call it roundtable discussion. Just to remind you, I will also do visual representation. So he, here we, we have wonderful guests, Linus Omondi, Regional Coordinator for Africa Royal Commonwealth Society, Bert Tang, Executive Director of Fortra, James O'Brien, Director of International Forum for Volunteering in Development, and Sofia Mejia, Volunteer Programs and Global Campaign Manager, Habitat for Humanity International. So in a minute, they are going to give short presentations to trigger some thoughts, to trigger some questions, and, at the, and after that, you will have the chance to have small group discussions with them and with David as well, including. So saying this, I would like to pass the floor to Mr. Linus Omondi to start his presentation. He was saying that because of the internet connection, and I would like to clarify it for all of you, it might be that he's not going to be able to use picture. So just uh, yeah, forgive for this and just listen to, to his uh, speech. Linus, please, the word is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm forced to. Um, thank you so much. I'm forced to unmute uh, uh, to, to remove video because uh, sometimes my internet is not that heavy and that clear, and that is why uh, I am forced to remove the video. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Linus Omondi. Uh, I'm the regional coordinator for Africa, the Royal Commonwealth Society. I'm also an artist, uh, I sing, uh, you've seen my videos and, and probably they'll play one we did for Corona in partnership with UNESCO. And uh, I just want to, because I have five minutes, uh, I might not show some slides and stuff, but I'll share something that all of you will benefit from. Uh, this year's theme is Stronger Together, which is actually one of our theme. Uh, in the in, in, uh, for this 36th uh, general conference, and it is what the Commonwealth was founded on. 
the Royal, the Royal Commonwealth Society is a network of uh, individuals and organizations committed to improving the lives and prospects of Commonwealth citizens across the world. So this is a very old organization which was uh, started in, on 26th June 1868, where a group of individuals in London established a literary, a literary and a scientific body that was dedicated to the great understanding of what was then the British colonies. We are all understand that uh, British had different colonies. So this was even before they came to Africa. This one, this was when they were colonizing America and different parts of Europe. So uh, in the in the in the early years, uh, decades of 20th century, the society became increasingly uh, increasingly progressive, and it admitted women as from uh, as from 1922 to become members and also young people. So in the latter half of the 20th century, the society became a center for exchange of ideas and provided a platform for a number of African leaders. We understand leaders like uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, who came from Ghana. We have leaders like Oliver Tambo. We have leaders like Chief Botelezi, Desmond Tutu. Uh, and, and also Nelson Mandela. These are part of uh, the leaders who came to London and lounged and talked on, on our uh, during our our, our our theme to promote African uh, voices. That was in uh, for the Royal Commonwealth Society. So this society is known and it is uh, patroned by the Queen. And under this, we have uh, different uh, themes that we work under. Our vision is also to improve the lives and prospects of all the Commonwealth citizens. Our mission uh, is take the leading role in achieving a better world for Commonwealth citizens by connecting, uh, convening, and equipping people to advance the values of the Commonwealth. And Commonwealth, actually, this is very important, is a voluntary network of 54 nations defined by its shared values and principles. This is including democracy, rule of law, human rights, equality, respect, and understanding, protecting the environment, among others. So this network uh, advocates for youth empowerment, education, and high-level advocacy. The society also champions the importance of connected communities, which is what CCIBS is about connecting communities through international voluntary service. We also, uh, we also have a theme on literacy, equality, and promotion of the environment across the, the Commonwealth countries. I'll talk about our four themes. We have literacy, we have equality and inclusion, we have connected communities, and we have, we have the environment. So under literacy, we have uh, a program called the Queen's Commonwealth ASA competition. This is the this was a competition that was started in 1883. Uh, it is one of the oldest writing competition in the world. So this one was started uh, to provide life changing opportunities for young people around the world. Each year, aspiring young writers are asked to submit their pieces, depending with the, the theme of the Commonwealth. Like for the 2021, we had the Commonwealth community in the Commonwealth. And uh, we, we were actually delighted to receive a record-breaking 25,648 entries just for the, for the competition. And this is something we can also emulate uh, in our CCAVS, where we can launch even AC competitions, depending on our themes, so that we can also encourage young people to know what IVS is about and also promote uh, the reading and the writing culture among different IVS organizations and, and in the world. So to, uh, this year's winners were from Kenya, Uganda, and India. And uh, yeah, they did a good job. So these are some of the areas we work. That was uh, under literacy. Uh, we have equity and also inclusion. Under equity and inclusion, we stress the need to treat each and every person equally within their communities regarding, uh, I mean, regardless of your law, regardless of your sex, regardless of your gender, regardless of your sexual orientation or any other status. And under this, uh, we are working with the uh, civil society groups, 
we are working with uh, different uh, uh, business societies. We are working with the government to ensure that uh, each and every person is respected and equally and uh, equally treated and included in whatever space. So under this, we have uh, we created uh, the Commonwealth Youth Gender and Equality Network. This is a youth uh, network that deals with issues to do with equality, and it was established in uh, Malta during the uh, Commonwealth Heads of State uh, Government uh, meetings. We also work under the environment, which uh, we also understand that we there was a COP26 meeting on environmental preservation, climate change, etc. So our society has really played a leading role in the development and uh, delivery of uh, the environmental protection. Under this, we have what we call the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy. This is the first environmental initiative uh, that was uh, launched by the Queen uh, in 2015 during the same meeting, heads of government meeting in Malta. And uh, 49 Commonwealth countries had dedicated in excess of 11.5 million uh, pounds for this initiative. So this initiative can, uh, anyone who's, 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 whose countries are in the Commonwealth also can participate. And uh, on this uh, Commonwealth uh, canopy, it presents a rare opportunity to unite the whole Commonwealth family and save one of the world's most important natural habitats. I have the form, uh, you can always fill, and uh, they give uh, approximately over 10 million uh, pounds for this issue, just to save the forest, the, uh, just to save the natural hab habitats, uh, protecting the ocean. So if you have a good proposal, uh, I, I sent the form to uh, CCAVS, I believe uh, we'll be able to receive your 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 your, your form and, and yeah, and then the last uh, last one is uh, uh, connecting communities, and this is where I think I, I will stress, and this is where uh, we can work together uh, because in the wake of COVID nineteen, uh, community cohesion and social action seems more important than ever as young people from across the world uh, play an increasingly important role, as, as all of us understand. And therefore, this year, we engaged young people from communities, first of all, in the UK and Cyprus. This is just a youth exchange program where both of them uh, have the possibility to exchange so that they can understand you know, all, all that it, it pertains uh, to IVS. So this is something also we can explore as a CCAVS and see how we can partner together to expand more, not only UK and Cyprus, but also UK and, uh, and, 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 uh, and Uganda, UK and, and Kenya, UK and, and whatever, so that we can expand, uh, expand this network. Thank so, you very much, Linus. Yes, I think my five minutes are over. I've tried so much to summarize and yeah, it's not enough. I have a lot, but thank you so much. I absolutely understand it, Linus. Thank you very much. And I could listen to all of you till the end of the day, to be honest. I yeah. just would like to support to make sure that there are opportunities for the others as well to, to articulate. And what I would like to assure you as well, just like everyone else who is here with us today, is that in a short while, you're also going to have the time to talk even more about all these things which you were raising up now. So people will have the chance to join you in a small breakout room and to elaborate more on all your talks uh, which you were raising now in the speech, Linus. Thank you a lot again. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, with all of this, I would like to pass the, the word now to Bert. Hello. Hi, can you guys hear me? Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever. What time is it? What time is your time? Mine is uh, dinner time, actually. I'm waiting for my dinner, actually. Uh, hello, peoples. I miss you guys. This is Bert from Hong Kong. If you hear my voice, say hello to me. Say hi to me. I mean, hi. 
Hello. Ah, yeah, you wanna say hi? Hello. Hi. <laughs> or type some hi or whatever. Yeah. Hello. Let me know that namaste, I'm speaking to a human namaste. being. Ah, oh, namaste. <laughs> okay, I hear you guys' voice. I'm pleased. I'm happy. Um, let me share like um some. Let's use some trick. Uh, how about let's use this one. Um, give me a second. Uh, Ah, yes, here. Wait, 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 wait. Why oh, can't? Okay. <clears throat> Let's try if it works. Ah, uh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Can you see me? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you're visible and hearable <laughs> on the in front of your presentation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in the presentation now. Yeah. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Um, to be, to start, um, let's ask you guys a question. I think we all are facing the challenge of uh, COVID. Um, and I, uh, how many of you have uh, organized some virtual program? If you have organized any virtual volunteering program, give me a V. Type me a V on the chat room, please. Aha, uh -huh, aha, uh -huh. quite some people. Sophia, yeah. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Quite many, quite many. Okay. If you do have uh, like a virtual volunteering experience, tell me how much you enjoy that. I mean, like give it a raise. From one, you mean like, uh, I hate it. 10 mean like you love it almost like a physical program. Eight. Whoa, okay, that's quite nice. Eight, seven, uh huh. Eight, okay, so that's great. So we all survive, not bad. Oh, some get five, six, or something like that. Yeah, uh, I take a rough average that may be like 6.823. Yeah, something like that, I guess. Uh, not very bad, but could be better, right? Let's see, like, uh, Today I come here to, to share like what we have um, tried before and see if we can um, find a better way to organize a virtual program. Um, because this is what we experienced for, for, for like last two years in Hong Kong. We, we have a lot of panic and then we survive, managed to survive. And then, but later on we find some trick that did help um, the things transform a bit. So I hope that today I will, at the end of the, my presentation, I will give you guys a gift and let's see how can we not just um, uh, uh, like transform, but flying together. Uh, one thing that I, I noticed is uh, I, I remember like what, what uh, David mentioned, uh, like, do you guys feel uh, you felt like a hero what, when you were uh, trying your first uh, work camp experience. How many did? I'm not sure if you do. If you do, you can give me a hero or give me a simple H. I did too. I mean, a hero didn't mean that I, I felt a hero because I, I felt I, I, I have a superpower or I did help other people, but I felt like I have a very special story belong to myself. Um, and I can share that with my friends happily and, and with honor and, 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 and that's my story. I felt that I, I, I grown up. And why I have that? Because like I have all such things. I, I have more friends. I, I, I felt per becoming purposeful and I explore more possibility. This is all keep repeating uh, in different programs. And one thing I noticed, no matter how, how difference is uh, no matter what kind of program that we are organizing. Uh, I felt like we are curating a hero journey for people. Um, we all like start from 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 an uh, 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 ordinary world, but and then we cross the uh, threshold and then try something very differently. We get helper in our work camps, we get my mentors in our work camp, we got a lot of challenge. We, we overcome it and then we transform ourselves and then we come back to the normal world. Um, this is just like um, many like story like Harry Potter or Lord of Rings. And also in our, our daily life, uh, 
when we during the COVID, uh, we keep uh, asking ourselves a question. If work camp is a, a hero journey for youth, can we copy this hero journey in the virtual world? And then we try all kinds of different things and, and ex, like, do the different kind of experiments. Like uh, uh, we have a Patreon program, we do some chat board, we make a live show, we make an online question game, whatever, whatever we can come off uh, and, 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 and just try it out. Uh, most of them fail actually. But some uh, is, is like uh, some experience managed manage to, to, to become our experience. And then, ah, see this, this is Johan. Uh -huh. We cooperate this with uh, our, our WordCamp partners, uh, including uh, today's speakers. <laughs> and, and also like uh, some, some old, uh, old friends that, that, that also have similar thoughts. Um, not sure if Johan is here. Anyway, um, we, we've got many different kinds of people uh, enjoying our program. And, and later on, we, we experienced like our, our experiment, get some payout that some participant, um, we, we keep promoting that program in our, our uh, in Instagram channel. And, and then after a year of struggling, we managed to, to build our community online uh, quite successfully. And, and now we, every month we can reach more than uh, 1 million user. And, and, and in average, every post we get, every day we, we make a post and every day uh, we get in average 2000 likes per post. And um, uh, we, we are attracting more funders and partners. And also um, we develop our own app. Yes, you can download our app nowadays both available in Apple, Apple Store and, and Android. That, that's what we are trying to do is like, we let them form teams, make it like a game, uh, different kinds of challenges. Uh, people can, can, can form a team together in different countries. They take challenge together, like a, 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 they, they use one US dollar to, to, to make a, a dishes and, and then share it to, to their friends around the world and repeat their hero journey online and um, achieve something like quite significant that um, we raise uh, even more funding than before and, and attracting even more participants than, than, than before. Uh, I have to say that the experience is surely uh, more shadow compared to the real like two weeks work camp, but uh, nowadays more people can join because this is virtual, it's, uh, many programs can, can be sponsored. And so today, um, uh, my five minutes is finished, but I, what I want to share with you is uh, um, we are having another program again, <laughs> and we are inviting you and your participant, your volunteer to join our online program. And because you guys are all our long old friends, take this talk, and then you can uh, 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 um, have a sponsorship for your participant. And you can screen cap this and then, um, um, later on, just fill in some form and then you will get uh, our offer. And uh, this, is, um, this is what we want to do. We, we make a platform and uh, promote micro-volunteering uh, together and making more people can join our movement together, no matter they are in whatever country and providing that they have a computer or a mobile, they are volunteer already. So, um, that's it. I hope that you will, I will see you again online while our, our, our online uh, application or other channels. Um, yeah, or yeah, sure, today we still have a chat room. <laughs> All right, so thanks. Indeed, Bert, thank you very much. Thank you for reminding again that we do you do have a chat room later on yes thank you again yeah, yeah i'll remember that thank you thank you <laughs> i'm gonna stop this uh how do i stop this i forgot uh <laughs> it's stop sharing just take but a, i can do oh, that for you uh, yeah. I just thank, you. It. Yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you yeah thank you very much and i would like to pass the word to james o'brien now
Hi, thank you, uh, Victoria. Um, and thank you all. It's a, real, it's a real privilege to be invited to take part in this conversation uh, with you today. I hope you can hear me and see me and see my slides. And I can see people nodding. I don't know how to make a small version of myself float in my slides. I'll have to ask Bird how to do that afterwards uh, for next time. But for now, uh, they'll have to be just, 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 my, just my plain old slides. Um, to introduce myself uh, to begin with, um, my name is James O'Brien. Uh, I'm the executive director of the International Forum for Volunteering for Development, uh, and we're generally known as Forum. Uh, and we are a group of our network of 32 volunteering for development organizations from around the world. Uh, and our role with those organizations is to promote the value of volunteering and development, uh, to create spaces for our member organizations to share knowledge, to share solutions, innovative approaches, good practice amongst themselves, uh, and also to promote good practice, to, so to help our member organizations be better at what they do in supporting people to volunteer in development contexts. To give a sense of who makes up our network, these are our members. Uh, we're very happy um, that uh, Habitat for Humanity have just joined in, in the last few weeks, and I know they're going to be, we're going to be hearing from them very shortly. And these are the 32 organizations that currently make up Forum. And what I'd like to do in my five minutes is to firstly give a snapshot of who we are and what we do as Forum, and also to get into a couple of aspects of the theme of strategic partnerships uh, for successful volunteering pro um, projects. So that's who makes up Forum. And what we do basically falls into three categories. We do convening, we do research, and we do standards. Uh, so we organize an annual conference. It's been online for the last two years, and we're hoping to be back in person in Senegal in October of next year. We also do um, working groups on various issues. We do regular uh, webinars and heads of agency meetings and those types of things. Uh, we also do research. So Forum can, um, uh, commissions its own research. We did a big project called COVID-19 and the future of volunteering for development in the last year. We did lots of research this year around issues of diversity, inclusion, and decolonization in volunteering. Uh, and we coordinate research amongst our members. And finally, we do standards. Uh, so we have a working group that has, over the last five years, developed the Global Volunteering Standard. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail as we go on. Um, and we just in terms of news, we have a very new membership structure. So going back to the 1960s, Forum was a network for international volunteering organizations. So you have to be sending volunteers across borders to take part in Forum. But just about a month ago, we had our annual meeting and following a long consultation, uh, we made the decision to open the doors of Forum to organizations that support volunteering at the local and the national level. And I mention this in part because it's a big shift for us uh, after 70 odd years of being focused on international volunteering, but also because I think it speaks to the current moment that we're in and also to the theme of the conversation that we're having today around strategic partnerships uh, for successful volunteering projects. And it recognizes the fact that the lines between international volunteering and other types of volunteering are blurred. In some ways, they always have been blurred. In some ways, they have become more blurred as a result of the COVID pandemic. But I think as a, having been a volunteer myself in various contexts, I'm sure from your own experiences, international volunteers tend to support the work of local volunteers, people who are volunteering in their own communities, and often to work directly alongside them. So the distinction between international and national forms of volunteers is in some ways an artificial one and in some ways is going away uh, and the change that we've made within forum is the recognition of that fact and the fact that there needs to be a stronger partnership we feel between different forms uh, of volunteering uh, and the second thing that i wanted to mention in a bit of detail is the global volunteering standard uh, so this was initially launched when we met in kigali in 2019 then we piloted it we reviewed it and we've released a, the second version of it just in the last few weeks and along with the standard, we've also created an online platform. So the standard is a, a statement of what we consider to be good practice in, in, in volunteering for development. And it covers four areas of focus. And those are designing and delivering projects, duty of care, managing volunteers, and measuring impact. Uh, and beyond the standard itself, we've also created a self-assessment tool. So if you're an organization that works with volunteers, you can assess your own practice against the standard. Uh, and a resource library. So at the moment, it includes about 100 different resources. We're looking at building it, uh, and it's op we're open to including more resources from this group uh, on the, the platform itself. But the idea is that you would engage with the standard. You might do the self-assessment and see where you stand in terms of your own practice with regards to the standard. And then there will be a, a set of resources that would support you to improve practice in certain areas that are identified through the self-assessment. And one of the things, one of the foundations of the standard is that the focus is on uh, impactful and responsible volunteering and 
a big um, one of the big foundations of the standard is around working through partnerships. So looking at the benefits of the global volunteering standard, the first one is that it ensures that volunteering programs are designed in partnership with local communities and respond to their needs. It also ensures that communities are meaningfully invo involved, not just in designing uh, projects, but also in measuring the impact of those projects and that all stakeholders in a volunteering scenario um, are um, kept safe and free from harm. And that includes not just the volunteers themselves, uh, but also the community members that they're working with and the, nat and the natural environment that they're working in. Um, so that's the second sort of aspect of um, partnership that I wanted to touch on, and that's covered very comprehensively in the global standard. And the final point that I wanted to make is that having been with Forum um, for two years, one of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of organizations that work with volunteers face a lot of the same concerns and issues and challenges and opportunities. And that's never probably been more true than it has been over the last 18 months with COVID. A lot of the questions that we've been facing, it was wonderful uh, to see the, um, the evolution in BIRDS presentation into thriving together in 2022. And I think we're all on that journey um, as volunteer involving organizations, but I think there are huge opportunities for us to work together as organizations that support volunteers and it is wonderful to have this conversation with you today and to be part of it. I also think that there is an ecosystem of networks as well within this volunteering world, whether it's forum, the VGA, CCIVS, IAVE, the African Union doing this phenomenal work um around volunteering and there's also huge opportunities for us as networks to work more closely together i think today is a really good starting point for that and we're certainly open to working uh, more closely with other volunteering networks in the future so i i'm sure i've raised more questions than i've answered but it's been a real privilege and i'm looking forward to continuing the conversation with you in the breakout group so thank you very much back to you victoria thank you a lot thank you very much james Again, still feel free to, to express clapping or whatsoever as you feel like. Meanwhile, I am passing the word to Sofia Mejia. Thank you, Victoria. Okay, hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. Okay, hope everyone can see it correctly. So my name is Sofia Mejia, and I'm here to represent Habitat for Humanity. I work for the Latin American and Caribbean office, but I'm currently based in Paris, so it's a little bit of a mix. Um, I'm going to start by saying a little bit of the organization. So we are a global nonprofit. Um, we have been working with families since 1976. And up to now, we have partnered with more than 35 million people around the world. Um, in terms of what we do, we believe just like very much similar to the story that Ingrid was sharing, we started creating shelter to communities. Um, we work very closely in partnership with families and communities who are not just spectators, but they do work side by side with us in terms of creating different housing solutions or different projects for them at a local, regional, global level. And of course, with the help of volunteers, we provide strength, stability, and self-reliance to these families so that they can continue to thrive after the project is concluded. I wanted to share, since we have global representation here, a little bit of where we are in the world. As you can see here, we have three regional offices, one for Asia Pacific located in the Philippines, Europe, Middle East and Africa, the office is located in Slovakia, and then the Latin American, the Caribbean office is located in Costa Rica, where I'm originally from. And we have our headquarters in the United States and Canada as well. Our areas of action you're gonna see here, we have a little bit of everything, of course, with the pandemic and even before we have been adapting ourselves to the needs of the communities in the different parts of the world where we work. And uh, just like David was mentioning, the SDG 17 has been crucial to us to recognize how, just like the theme of today, the stronger that we are by partnerships, the more people that we can serve as well. So we have working on this partnership being very intentional on how we measure, how we create value. And like Ingrid was saying, how we add value to our partners as well. In this continuum, 
by uh, coordinating, collaborating, and finding the best coalitions for our work at regional, global, local level. And we have been working on this theory of change that I wanted to share with you. So the most important thing for our topic today here um, is that we are creating this theory of change that the organization is going through, having people at the center all the time, having our most important partners, our families and the people that we work for that we want to serve as the center of everything that we do and how recognize how we can expand a deeper engagement and a deeper collaboration in the partnerships that we create. Just like James mentioned, we recently joined Forum, and I'm pretty sure that that's going to be a fantastic opportunity for the organization as well. So we have different forms of partnerships. We have bilateral partnerships. You can see here some examples. We work with, lo with the local and national governments as well, all around the world. Uh, we have corporates that support us a lot, individual donors, major donors that work with us. And we also work with other agencies in terms of multi-sector collaborations. Like you can see here with interaction, we do a fantastic work in everything that is related to safeguarding, that it's a key priority for us right now, as well as translators without borders who help us develop all the resources that we can share with our network in different languages. We have the Urban Housing Practitioners Hub, where we do events to advocate for the human right to housing and the human right to water around the world as well. And of course, we work with VGA and with Ayave as well to develop more um, intentional collaborations in terms of volunteer programs specifically. Um, in terms of strategic partnerships, how do we work with that and what do we look for? The first thing is that we need to be strategically aligned, like Ingrid mentioned as well. Uh, it's very important for us that we are aligned in terms of values and what we're looking for. We are um, measuring the impact of these partnerships by having quality over quantity of the partnerships that we create. We're doing it at all levels of the organization in all the areas of intervention that I shared before. Um, and what are the outcomes that we're looking from this? Well, of course, the impact, the scale, the resources, and being more effective in everything that we do. Um, and finally, I just want to recognize that all of this is done with the amazing help of our volunteers that, like Bird was saying, have gone from having the hands on the build site, literally, to doing stuff virtually and building with us virtually, supporting local volunteers, um, as we go and navigate through this pandemic, our amazing individual donors and our amazing facers that are on the streets, again, which is very hopeful, working with them. And then, of course, the help of all the corporations that engage with us through um, corporate volunteering around the world and the local and national government that support us. And that's it. Thank you so much. Looking forward to continuing to talk with you on the break rooms. Thanks, Victoria. And thank you, Sophia. Thank you very much. Again, a huge thank you and, uh, and appreciation for uh, all of our guest speakers. I would like to ask you for a round of uh, applause with either showing your hands or some an emoji. Yeah, thank you a lot for being here with us. And now I would like to invite you in a short while, we are going to open the breakout rooms. I believe by now, because it's a reality for more than a year, or almost two years now that we are living in this uh, Zoom surface, you might be familiar with these breakout rooms. Uh, when, it, when we are opening them, they are going to appear on your screen. And if it's not happening, then on the lower part of your skin, you can see the toolbar and there you can read breakout rooms. It's gonna pop up for you and then you will have the chance to choose which room you would like to join. For the next coming half an hour, while, while these rooms are open, you are having also the chance to 
move around. So in case you feel like you would like to fly to another room, then you just simply change and move to another room. In any given moment, if you need any support from us, just let us know. We are here also to move you among the rooms in case this is what you need. And uh, yeah, based on what you were hearing, wherever you, became, you, you got inspired, I can imagine you got inspired by all five of the people who were speaking so far. So that's why I'm saying feel free to move among the rooms. Just choose according to how you feel and how you would like to, where you would like to engage in conversations. What I would like to ask from you is uh, that while you are engaged in a conversation, uh, also use a so-called jam board of what we what have gonna, no, sorry, of which we're gonna have a link for in a moment. And this is there so that we can have some uh, conclusions to be seen after, uh, after we were, you were in the breakout room. So I'm sorry for the confusion. I just wanted to share with you my screen and that took me a bit of a sidetrack. So in a moment, we are going to share a link with you. And what we would like to ask from you that when you go to a room and you discuss and you have some insights, you have some conclusions, some future suggestions, then you just go to the Jamboard, you choose the number of the meeting room you are at the moment, and you leave a post-it for us. It's called sticky note in the gem board, as you can see. And then you just see your aha moment or whatever, which comes to your mind. You save it and then you just put it to the main conclusions or to the main topics raised, whatever inspirational talked or, or uh, ideas just came to you. We are just for, because of course our time is limited in this conference, we just want to make sure that some ideas and thoughts can be shared with everybody. So if we have these boards put together, then we can have a visual representation of each room. So even if you couldn't be in one room for the whole time, then you still can have some information. Also, if you have any question or whatsoever, then even in the breakout rooms, just you can use also the chat among yourselves, however you feel like. What is important that Natalie and me, we are not going to be in the breakout rooms. So if you need something from us, you always can find us in the main room. And it's also like all the guest speakers are invited in these rooms as well. So they are going to be in each room and uh, one of them. But their role is to also to get engaged in conversations with you so they are not uh, facilitating or whatsoever. It is a self-organizing setup for you in the breakout rooms. So saying all of this, I would like to ask now, Natalie, if we are having the breakout rooms, please give me a sign. Yes, okay. So we are opening the breakout rooms. Feel free to move into them. And if you need support, you can write it in the chat for us as well, or you just can unmute yourself and speak up so we can move you to a room. Enjoy, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry if it was not clear. You see oh, the guest speaker's name for the rooms.
Okay, thank you. Um, I saw Natalie had raised her hand. I don't know if she had something to say first before. I was clapping. <laughs> I was okay. clapping the, everyone who, yeah, the great work. Thank you, Mercy. Okay, so I just wrote a small short speech. Um, if the facilitators could help me share the screen as I read what I have written. Okay, is it the PDF document? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes, I am doing it. Please give me a feedback if you see what you wanted to see, Mercy, also. Yes, I do. Okay. I see. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, wow. What an engaging session we've had today. So please use the emojis to tap yourselves on the back for staying until the end. So feel free to tap yourself. Um, as we come to a close for today, I hope we feel inspired and motivated to continue our involvement in volunteer service. A lot has happened in the world since the 1920s, but IVS still remains evolving, adapting, actively present. And this attests to the resilience of IVS. Most recently, with the limitations caused by the pandemic, it wasn't quite clear if there is still a future for IVS. In fact, the necessity of IVS was constantly questioned. So it's quite encouraging to see all of you key players in the IVS space still active, still wanting to be part of the conversation on steps forward, still committing to evolving and adapting to the changing world, still holding on. Thank you all for being part of the IVS community. As one of the speakers of the day mentioned, in the transformation journey, we are now moving into the thriving stage. Um, so let's commit to finding ways of being together, of being stronger together, so we can thrive together and continue to hold the IVS torch high. From Nairobi, Asante Sana. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot. I would like to invite all the participant to show however you want to show us so your acknowledgement to mercy like with emoji or just uh, yeah however you feel like thank you very much for this closing thoughts and and adding this value also for for the conference thank you a lot and before we would uh, have last closing moment, I would like to ask you for something which is very particular and really precious in any given uh, online uh, event, which is a group picture of this event. Yeah, so I would like now to invite all of you who have the possibility, even if so far you wanted to hide a bit because you were still swallowing the last pieces of this little cookie or drinking or whatever, now I would like to ask you to open your camera. I mean, if it's possible, yeah, if you are on the road and driving and, uh, and this is the, one of the most dangerous moves because you're gonna crash into cars in a moment, then please just keep your camera closed. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, and then, okay, more and more pictures I see moving. Okay, perfect. And so on my count of three, I just would like to have an expression on your face, how inspired you are feeling at the moment, how is inspiration looking like after the open conference for you? So I'm going to count back and uh, Ling, I would like to ask you to make the picture. So three, two, one, inspiration. Great, thank you a lot. Let's have another round. Don't stop, don't stop. Extend it even more, yeah? I want to count back again. Three, two, one, inspiration. Perfect. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much. And before we check out fully, I would like to share one last video with you now, uh, which is inviting you also to sign a manifesto. So I'd like to ask your attention for two more minutes, two and a half, let's say, for this video. And just please, once I share the screen, just give me a bit of feedback if you see and hear what's happening. Boop, 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 boop. 
Oh. Okay. Healthy living soil is not an option. It is essential for life to thrive. In recent human history, quality and care of soil has been largely ignored and misunderstood. Recently, governments have begun to agree on water and air pollution regulation, while soil remains a sensitive subject. 33% of the word soil is degraded. There is an excessive use of intensive agriculture, and climate change is making the soil more vulnerable to degradation. Soil is where 95% of all our food grows. Healthy, biodiverse soil means healthy food and healthy people. Healthy soils are not only the foundation for food, they are the main source of fuel, fiber, and medical products. They are also essential to all ecosystems, playing a key role in the carbon cycle, storing and filtering water, and improving resilience to floods and droughts. Soil health is directly related to human survival and well-being. The vital role that healthy living soil plays in our ecosystem needs to urgently be recognized, protected and restored. It is life for the future generations. We must come together to protect and save it, to preserve not just humankind, but all life on Earth. Thank you for, for your attention. Uh, we are going to paste, uh, copy paste also the link for this video in a moment here. So in case you want to rewatch it, there you also can see the link to, which is uh, guiding you for signing the manifesto, just to make it sure that you are having it and pasting it again to the, to the chat. And yeah, we arrived at the end of the open conference of CC IDS in 2021. I again would like to acknowledge uh, all of your participation. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for being active and contributing with all your thoughts and presence in this conference. I find it kind of fascinating how we are really can be engaged and and uh, we are sharing so much with each other in such a extreme uh, small space in the physical reality i mean just seeing each other in this in these pictures i really find it beautiful that how you still could bring all the inspiration and this fruitful talks all of you how you were sharing here so thank you again for all the guest speakers and thank you again for all of your contribution as to check out, I'd like to ask you to make a move to say goodbye to each other and please use the reactions just to express how you were here and how do you feel now to leave. And, Joan, yeah. Good. Excellent. Ciao. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. It was cool to Thank meet you. so many people. Everyone. Thank you, care. everybody. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bye bye. I'll be on the Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. Much pleasure. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. Don't Take forget to come and walk. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. You. Bye -bye. Thank you. See you. I just... Yeah, keep...